The last time I saw my sister was, I would say, a year and a half ago because I've been inc incarcerated in San Francisco for the last 11 months. And um, I saw her a couple months before I came and here and got arrested. I think the closest I'll come to seeing her again is whenever I get sent to prison. I'm hoping that that isn't the case, but um, you know, I'm prepared for the worst. Hopefully I'll be able to see her while I'm free, but it might not work out that way. Uh, growing up, I was the youngest born to four girls to my mother, Kelly. Um, I never really had a chance to get to know my oldest sister, Laurel. She had gotten into a pretty bad addiction and my time with her was always cut short because my mom wanted to protect us from her destructive lifestyle. But I always, you know, wondered about her and wanted to know what she was like and always wanted to spend more time with her but um, I never really got that chance. By the time I was in fifth grade, on the day I was supposed to graduate from my D.A.R.E. program, at high, um, fifth grade in my elementary school, I was unexpectedly picked up by my nanny and my older sister. They just told me that something bad had happened and we had to leave town immediately. Um, I didn't get a chance to go back home. They already had my bags packed and I didn't get to say goodbye to my mom and we just left town. And after being gone for about two weeks, I slowly gained information on why we were not able to be at the house. My older sister, Laurel, had been involved in a murder and the police were unable to locate her. So the police kept thinking that my mom was hiding her or helping her. So they kept harassing my, ha my mom at the house and that's why she had my nanny take us out of town. By the time the police found her, they booked her and she was awaiting trial. A year later, my sister was sentenced to 27 to life in uh, prison, and she was sent to Valley State Prison for Women in Chowchilla. By the time I was 12, my mother started taking us all on the 11-hour drive to go visit her as much as she could, and I looked at that as my chance to be able to start forming a relationship with my sister, since she was, you know, in my eyes, at a 12-year-old, she was in a safe place. And so we started writing all the time. And by the time I was 18, I started to go visit her as much as I could on my own. And we just had an amazing bond after that. I would look forward to those visits more than anything. She taught me how to play spades, how to play dominoes. And while we were eating our favorite snack there, which was hot tamales and kettle corn out of the prison vending machine. and. I just, I loved it. It was, it was my chance to finally get to know her and have that relationship with her. And I, you know, it devastates me that she will probably be in there for the rest of her life. But to me, it's, it's almost a blessing also because now I get to see her whenever I want. I know that she's safe. I know that she's not on drugs and she's, you know, living a good, healthy lifestyle now and I'm more than blessed to have that relationship with her, and I wouldn't change it for anything. If I could say one thing that I hope she could hear would just be that I love her, and um, I'm sorry. I wish things would have turned out differently, but we all have our own paths that we have to take. And uh, no matter what, I'll never abandon her.